So there are a lot of, of block diagram type of programs out there that people are using for for simulation purposes. Uh, two, two popular ones are, are LabVIEW and also the MATLAB Simulink program. Both of these programs uh, combine, you know, what you might call structured and block diagram programming. The structured meaning because you, have, you could, as the M file type descriptive language, the, uh, you know, using text-based code, uh, they all uh, they have a capacity to communicate with uh, physical hardware. So you can, like, like with LabVIEW, we can control data acquisition and so on. There's also ways of, of communicating with the user, and um, and also they they have both adopted modeling and simulation tools for for uh, uh, especially for physical engineering systems. Uh, so um, either one of them are are are, are useful, and uh, for the purposes of this course, we've adopted LabVIEW, and in particular, the module, the control and simulation module, is 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 what allows us to. Um, to, to model uh, system equations. Um, and I'm just going to show you some of the menus and in a separate video on a tutorial for setting up a simulation of the pendulum, I'll show you how to use this. Uh, but for now, uh, when you go under your block diagrams, if you've installed the control and simulation module, you'll see, again, sometimes it's called control. Um, here it's called control design and simulation, but uh, under here, you can see this. There's a control and simulation block, and it's because there's there's also some design, control design and simulation modules that you might have installed. All those are under control design and simulation, but then the control and simulation loop, which is right here, is the one that we'll play with, right? So, so you have some idea of where to find this. So the control and simulation loop introduces a new uh, environment into LabVIEW, and as I said, I'll show you how to use that in a tutorial. But uh, you now have these block diagram VIs that uh, um, use kind of a more traditional block diagram uh, algebra. So you have gains and sums and multiplications of signals. You also have the ability to, to describe continuous linear systems, which are traditionally used in courses like the dynamic systems and controls class the, and, and, and in controls courses you can you have your integrator you see the one over s the s functions and you also have other functions you can describe state space equations transfer functions and so on so all of these are now included when you when you install that and you can use them in your models to describe your systems uh, as i mentioned the integrator block is a key element for how we integrate each of the state equations and we need one of these for each state equation that we have you know you, you send it an input and it's going to integrate that signal and give you the output so in, in this case we send it an x dot it gives us x keep in mind this is um, a, a numerical integration interface right it's it's uh, not a laplace operator and when you double click on it uh, when you have labby open you can set certain parameters uh, for the, how this integrator is going to work. Um, you, you can give it the initial condition, but you can also tell it to wire the initial condition uh, to a terminal rather than put it in this menu. You can also limit this integrator so it only works between certain you know, high and low values. Again, I'll, I'll show you some of that in the tutorial. Uh, so here, like first order example that I showed in the previous slide, here's how that might look in the control and simulation loop, right? You have the one, the integrator, remember, and you have a 1 over tau coming in through a gain. Here's the gain block. You generate dx dt. I just put a little note there, and the output goes into x, and then you can plot that. Here's a, um, a block that allows you to, it. What you can see time is not explicit here. This is the signal, so this little block basically uh, clusters time in simulation time with uh, signal and that way when you send it to this waveform chart it'll, it'll, it graphs the result and I'm just putting a sign signal in here as the input but you could have any input here uh, that you want right so this is a simple little example and uh, I'm going to show next as I mentioned in a tutorial here's uh, what a simulation program might look like for for the state equations for the pendulum. Here are the two equations I've just put on the slide here, but you can see what I've done is I have one integrator block for each state, right? So I, I have x1 dot and x2 dot, and I'm using a formula node here 
So I like to use formula nodes to type out the equations. And note you have inputs coming into this formula node that you need to calculate the x dot. Here's x1 dot, which is x2, right? x2 dot is equal to uh, minus g sine of x1 divided by L. And these parameters C have been defined up here and I've passed them into this uh, this loop here is the control and simulation loop. And as I said, I'll, 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 I'll talk about that shortly in, I mean, in, a, in a related video. And you can put in initial conditions in here also and, and then you can then plot uh, everything on, on the waveform graph. Right. Uh, by the way, the, the simulation parameters like the initial time, the final time, which solver to use, all of these can be set on these terminals here. Uh, or you can right click on this black border and a pop-up window will appear where you can set those parameters. It's nicer to have uh, to wire them to a front panel control. That way you can be changing um, those parameters. As I said, I'll show you how to do that, get you started in a related tutorial video.